I said two years ago that this was going to happen. In fact, I said it numerous times that BYD and other electric car manufacturers were very, very unlikely to ever successfully sell cars in the United States. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. It's a very little known fact that uh, Joe Biden hates BYD. Now, it's not just Donald Trump. All the news headlines are saying Donald Trump hates BYD. Uh, he hates electric cars from China. He hates China. And he wants to impose a 100% tax on Chinese EVs built in Mexico. Obviously, Chinese companies are planning on exploiting a loophole. BYD is in Mexico right now. In fact, they were there for the last month looking for a site to build a gigafactory to build potentially millions of electric cars that they would then flood the United States with affordable electric vehicles, even pickup trucks as well. I never personally thought this was really all that serious or legitimate. The reason is this. If you go back and have a look at some of Joe Biden's comments before he was elected president of America, he was more against BYD than even Donald Trump was. Now, I'm not saying I have a personal dog in the fight or an opinion on what Joe Biden said or what Donald Trump is saying. Honestly, I don't really care. To me, it's sort of just water under the bridge. I live in Australia. Who cares? But here's the thing. If you're going to vote for one party or the other, and my point is here, I don't think either party plans on enabling any Chinese EV manufacturers to exploit this loophole. I'm pretty confident both either Democrats or the Republicans, Republicans are probably telling BYD, yeah, yeah, that's not going to work. We're not going to let this happen. As they should be. Well, hang on a minute, as they should. What am I saying here? Why should the American government stop these Chinese EV manufacturers? Well, because if they don't, then there'll be no more General Motors, there'll be no more Ford. There'll be no more Dodge, Ram, Jeep. All these companies will cease to exist. Think about it, right? These companies all were big players in China over the last decade, all of them. In fact, they had massive percentage of market share in China. They're selling millions of cars here. General Motors was for many years the biggest automotive manufacturer in China, period. They're not anymore, though. In fact, that's, that's, all a, that's all last year's picture. And now think of it this way, right? You know how many factories American companies have invested in, how many staff they've trained in China. They've spent billions and billions of dollars. All of this is just lost. They're going to lose all of these assets. It's, it's inevitable. We all know it's happening. Ford and General Motors sales continue to fall rapidly in China. And Jeep has left. They've basically declared bankruptcy in China. Jeep did last year. So, I mean, what has America got left? Well, they've got Europe. Who plans on dominating in Europe? Well, Chinese manufacturers. Ford and General Motors and um, American car brands have very little market share left in Europe. Really, it's just North America that American car manufacturers have left. Now, it's true Donald Trump's pretty much right that there would be no American car manufacturers if America was to lose America to China. And this is just inevitable. And is this a good thing? I mean, car, I mean, people who buy cars might think it's great. They might think, oh, look at all these cheap, affordable cars. But it's not really good for geopolitics. It's not really good for American jobs. It's not really good for balancing power. So you can kind of see, you know, where things are going here. You can see why neither Joe Biden nor Donald Trump are going to allow this to happen. Now, the media is re reporting on this in a very, very irresponsible way. And I'll just share with you what the media is saying. They're saying Donald Trump is vowing to slug Chinese car companies with unprecedented tariffs. Now, he is basically just saying publicly what both the Democrats and Republicans are both going to be forced to do. Uh, no matter which party gets in power. Now, I'm not saying you should vote for Donald Trump. I don't think you should, but uh, let's be realistic here. Let's not just report bullshit, which is what the media do in America. Let's make shit up, right? We all know this. It's ridiculous. It's an embarrassment. The media is like a bunch of whores. They're just, uh, they're probably worse. At least whores are telling the truth. They're advertising a product and you get that product. You probably, you know, you're getting a product or service, you, you pay for it. So it's a, probably a fair trade in most instances. But with the media, it's not. You're just being brain fed. You're just being spoon fed uh, stuff that's making you a moron. It's making you an idiot. Former US President Donald Trump has taken yet another shot across the bow of China's car industry, um, says an Australian publication vowing to impose a 100% tariff on vehicles made in Mexico for Chinese companies if he's re-elected later um, on this year. Last month, Chinese car giant BYD announced 
it would open an electric car factory in Mexico, which would give it access to the United States car market, which is the second biggest car market in the world. 16 million cars are sold in the US. It's very profitable. Trump, who will contest the November election against President Joe Biden, has previously said he would impose a 50% tariff on Mexican-built Chinese cars. He's changed that to 100%. Now, the current tariff on Chinese cars sent to America is 27.5%. But there is no tariff on some of them. If you are to send American cars made in America to China, you're allowed to send one back. So if you send one to China, you can send one back to America. If you send a thousand, you can bring back a thousand. And there's no tariffs, no charges at all. Uh, that was Donald Trump's creation, that rule. He also created the rule of the 27.5% tax. So there's a 27.5% tax on Chinese cars, whether they're made by General Motors or anyone else, Tesla, doesn't matter. If those cars are made in China, it's a 27.5% tax to send them and sell them in America. That's the current rule. It's called the chicken tax. And, you know, Everyone thought it was a terrible rule, but I think it was probably the right decision. Now, Europe's going to do a similar thing, apparently. But we'll see if that happens, because that could hurt European car manufacturers more than it hurts Chinese car manufacturers. Bloomberg has reported that Mr. Trump has doubled down on his earlier comments at a campaign rally over the weekend, taking aim at Chinese President Xi Jinping. Those big monster car manufacturing plants you are building in Mexico right now, they're not yet, and you think you are going to get that, not hire Americans, and you're going to sell the cars to us? No, Mr. Trump said. We are going to put a 100% tariff on every car that comes across the lot, in other words, across the, the line from Mexico to the US. You screw us and we'll screw you. It's very simple, it's very fair. Now, a lot of Trump's wording is sound as extreme, but it's kind of true, let's be real here. I mean, it's like taking over the U.S. automotive industry, exploiting a loophole to get a cheap uh, Chinese labor. They'll bring a lot of Chinese people and have them work in Mexico, um, build cheap factories in Mexico on cheap land. Um, yeah, I mean, it is sort of exploiting the scenario, the situation, right? At present, there's a 27.5% tax. But here's the thing. Um, BWD would need to have 75% of content sourced from within North America to clear existing US tariff requirements. It's likely BWD's Mexican built cars would not get the $7,500 tax incentive. The reason is because 50% um, of the materials wouldn't be made in the United States or in a country of, or in a free trade partner country. Probably more than 50% of the parts would still be made in China and they'd ship them over and assemble the vehicles in Mexico. The US government, though, last year proposed a rule which would prevent any EV with battery components sourced from a foreign entity of concern, primarily China, um, from receiving this $7,500 tax credit. And that's the reason that Tesla Model 3 vehicles in the US uh, using CATL's lithium ion phosphate batteries don't currently qualify this year. This proposal included a provision which would exclude cars made by companies which are owned, controlled by, headquartered in, incorporated in, or manufacturing in a foreign entity of concern from the incentives. Obviously, they're particularly meaning China. Though there are no Chinese brands selling vehicles in the US currently, Geely owned Swedish siblings, Volvo and Polestar, uh, well, they're owned by Geely, and that's a Chinese conglomerate. There's also Buick and Lincoln vehicles that are made in China that they're sold in the US, but that's you know like, that's a pretty fair deal because um, that includes America sending some Buick and Lincolns or, or basically some cars made in America to China and then it's basically like a swap, essentially. Trump has placed a target on China's car industry in a bid to protect US jobs. The United Auto Workers Union through its support behind President Biden, who backed the union's industrial action against Ford, General Motors, and Stellantis. And obviously the union is now targeting Toyota. It's targeting Tesla, Volkswagen. It basically wants to unionize all car manufacturers in the United States. And it's putting a lot of, in fact, it's putting a lot of money and resources into kind of forcing those, those automotive brands in the US to unionize as well. 
under their banner, not under the union banner, but under the UAW union. Trump has been opposed to EVs. And this is the biggest problem that I have with Donald Trump. He claimed in September last year that the US government's target for EV uptake would kill the local automotive industry and give China more power. Now, that doesn't really make sense because the reality is here that um, EVs made in America get this $7,500 tax incentive. It's a big advantage. Plus, they get battery incentives for manufacturers to you know, basically manufacture batteries in the US. As a result, uh, there's been unprecedented investment into the American automotive industry. Like we've, we haven't seen this in many, many decades. Massive investment from uh, global car companies. All of them have invested billions and billions and billions and billions. I mean, tens, actually, I believe the figure is approaching $200 billion worth of investment into the American automotive industry. And that's on making EVs um, and batteries in America. Now, that is huge for the American automotive industry. And it's certainly not killing it. It's actually supporting it. Thanks for watching.